What'd they say? Now he tried to reason with them. He tried to reason with them. He said, hey, y'all come up to this meeting. what they say? We ain't coming up. That's disrespect. And that's how it be. When a situation go out and these people feel arrogant and, and their ego steps in and the humble man try to say, well, listen, bro, let's, let's have a sit down. Oh, we ain't coming down there. Who y'all think y'all are to summon us? That's the attitude that they had. I was summoned but one time in my life. One time by leadership, by elders. And you know what? I went. They said to me, I got a phone call, and I didn't even really have a great relationship with these guys. I barely knew them. They called me on the phone. They said, hey, Prince, we heard you made somebody. Oh, no, my name was Moray then. Hey, Moray, we heard you made somebody a prince. How are you going to make somebody a prince and you ain't nothing but a Moray? I need you to come to New York and have a sit down with us. And they were my elders. So I went because I was summoned. And I went like an obedient servant is supposed to do. And I went, sat down at the table with them, these three older guys who's been in this way of life much longer than me, lived this life and, and was thoroughly trenched in it much longer than I was and much older than me. And they sat me down at the table, had a hearing with me, and they wanted to know why I did what I did. I said, well, I'm the authority in Philadelphia. Look, I'm from Philly. I'm the authority in Philadelphia. I can make a man whatever I want to make a man. Didn't know that you had to go through these certain channels and protocols and these certain orders to give people titles, but they were right. You don't just pop up and call yourself a moray. You don't just pop up and call yourself a prince. You don't pop up and call yourself a priest. These things should be commissioned upon you by others, not yourself. Because when you do it yourself, it shows the arrogance of your own mind. Now, if you went and you asked the permission of one of them to ordain you to be a prince, then yes, that's what you do. You ask them, you can ask them, can I be a moray? Can you make me a moray? Yes. But some elder in the community or some prince in some type of way has to give you that title of nobility. You don't just give it to yourself. You don't just put yourself in that position. Hey, I'm, I'm Prince Malachi Z. York. Of the, of the tribe of such, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't do that. The elders, is there's a lineage that goes back. You are actually joining an order of elders who have been, been, been set up a commission by the creator's authority that we know of to put people in certain positions in this whole nation. Once you're a prince, nobody could ever take that away from you. I don't care how what kind of accusations they make against you. I don't care what they say. You cannot have that taken away from you. You do not have the authority. Once the Most High gives it to you, man can't take it from you. It's just that simple. So it's best that you're commissioned by elders or leadership to give you a position. And I want to make you a more ready. You got any paperwork to back it up? Yeah, here, here are your credentials. Here's your paperwork. This is what you'll be known as from this day forward. Moray, whatever your name is. I want to make you a prince. Well, if he's going to make you a prince, he has to be either a prince or higher. You really can't get no higher than a prince. For real, for real, a chief man can't make you a prince. It's supposed to be a prince who makes you a prince or a king who makes you a prince. That's how it's supposed to be. But today we allow chief men to do things and give out positions and titles of nobility, and that's okay if they're well respected in the community. And that's how we roll with it. But you're not supposed to be a regular layman and just pop up and say, I'm a prince today, or I'm a moray today, or I'm a teacher today. There's a lot of people who've been in this way of life for a year, five years even, some even 10 years, and they feel like they know something and they want to make themselves a moray. I had one brother who, who, who was from Florida. Good brother, good brother, but he had only been in his way a short period of time. He didn't know Torah. But yet he had the title of Moray when I met him. I tried to honor and respect it until his own people came up to me and saying, hey, why has he got a title of Moray and he don't know nothing? What he do is he go on YouTube, and, and this is what they said to me. He go on YouTube and he watch YouTube videos, and he come back and teach us what he learned on the YouTube videos. That doesn't make him a Moray. We can go watch the YouTube videos ourselves. I said, you're right. He's not a Moray. 
So when I stopped calling that brother Moray, he got offensive. He got angry with me. And he separated himself from me. All because I wouldn't call him Moray. The reason why I wouldn't call him Moray because he wasn't conducting himself and moving like a Moray. Moray's put in a lot of work. They do a lot of studying. They know a lot of the language. They might not speak it fluently, but they understand the language. There's a qualification, there's a criteria that you have to accomplish in order to be considered a moray. This brother had none of those things. He knew almost nothing, nothing. And then some of the stuff he teach was so far off the wall when you questioned him about it. Oh, I, I don't know. Oh, I, I got to go check that out and see. Well, why are you teaching it if you don't understand it? If you don't understand it, why are you teaching it? So this is what we have in Israel today with a lot of people. And that brother still got attitude against me. He still got attitude with me because I told him he wasn't a moray.